they're falling apart faster than I can fix them. Hey guys, you know, one of the things that I love about March Madness is it gives me the opportunity not just to review new machines, but to go back and reflect on my experiences with the 3D printers that I have been using. And with the Monoprice Select Mini series of 3D printers from version 1 to 2 to version 3, I've in the past given them great praise. Fantastic machines, well put together, come out of the box ready to use and solid metal construction so you can hand them to kids and they won't break them. I had a lot of good things to say about these machines. However, you know how when like one light bulb in your house burns out and then all of a sudden like five more burn out right after that? That's kind of how I feel about these machines. Every single Monoprice Select Mini that I have access to, and I use them not just at home, but at the makerspace as well. I, we purchased them based on my recommendation. They're all falling apart. And it's not the same thing that's falling apart on each one. On this one, the Y-axis is starting to slip, and I, I don't know why, and I tighten it up, but it still seems to be happening. On this one, the build plate just doesn't heat anymore, and it's fine. We can get around it. We just tell it not to heat the build plate and print on a cold build plate. It's fine, but on this one over here, the extruder is going out, and it's one thing and one thing and one thing, and sometimes... I can strip the parts from one and put them into another, and it works, but sometimes I do that, and it doesn't. And I'm starting to think that the problem is that their motherboards, their controller boards, are all starting to die, and they're all dying at more or less the same time. It's like they're all having these concurrent strokes, and it's affecting different systems as it goes, but that means that swapping out a part won't fix it. It's the motherboard that's broken. I've gone from having four of these at the makerspace to having two and a bunch of parts. I have four of these at home, and one of them is parts at the makerspace. And even then, I feel like it's a game of trying to keep up with them as they're failing, like Data trying to save his daughter with his hands moving so fast that you can't see him, even though it's all off camera. But is that too old of a reference for people? Still, you get my point. I have loved the Monoprice Select Mini series of 3D printers, but in the recent experiences, I, I don't know if I could recommend them anymore, which is actually an okay thing. Monoprice doesn't really sell these anymore. Sometimes they do, but it seems like they're going out the door, and that's probably for the best. They have a new cheap 3D printer that they're recommending. They've got the Voxel, which is the Adventure 3 from Flashforge, which is a, a printer that I still absolutely recommend, but we'll talk about that in a later segment. But as far as the Monoprice Select Minis go, ah, I'm afraid that their life has ended, and that makes me very, very sad. But at the same time, everything has ended. Now, the part that I feel worst about is if somebody bought these on one of my recommendations, and this is still their only 3D printer. This is a great starter printer, and it started a lot of people. I hope, I really hope, that if you're one of those people who started with this printer, that you're not still on it, but that you've taken the opportunity to upgrade and to go to something new and to go to something better, because this is a very small and constrained space, and it's good for that. But hopefully you said, you know what, I need, to, I need something a little more and you've moved on, and this printer dying is not a big loss to you. Because if your Monoprice Select Mini is dying as well, my condolences. I'm sorry, it's terrible. But it does seem to be happening with every single one that I know. So it, it knocks it off the recommendation list, but I will always cherish the memory. Next up on this rapid-fire re-re-re-review is the... Neva from Dagoma, the Dagoma Neva 3D printer. I still regret the less than favorable review that I gave this at first. I just didn't see from the way it was built and the way it was designed and, and its lack of a user interface and stuff. I didn't see the vision behind this machine until I handed it to my kids and let them go to town with it. And oh, go to town they did. They used this printer 
for ever since that review, years. However, recently, it's starting to show its age a little bit. It's got a 3D printed frame. It's got 3D printed Z carriages. It's got a 3D printed enclosure around the extruder. And while I kind of expected that the surrounding extruder idea with PLA plastic would be a bad idea, that seems to have been fine. The Z carriage is fine, but the frame on the top, it's starting to show some warping and buckling. It's just got little weird divots in it. I'm not really sure what the problem is or why it's happening, but there you go. This printer is, is starting to sag with age. Now, that uh, if, if as long as it printed, I wouldn't care about that, but that's the other problem. For some reason, and I don't know why, it can't seem to complete a print. It will start and it won't finish. I used this printer in the print a block Kickstarter video. And in this video, I did a time lapse of this because it's one of the few printers I have where the bed doesn't move. But I had to cut that time lapse off early because that print failed. And that seems to be every print on this gets a little while up and it fails. Clog nozzle, I don't know. Uh, failure on the extruder motor, I don't know. I need to take it apart and I need to give it some TLC. And chances are, once I do that, it'll be back to working just fine. The big question is, is it going to get that TLC? Because, yes, it's a great printer and my kids have been loving it, but I've handed them now the Flash Forge Adventure 3 printer and they're using that now and not this anymore. So, am I really inspired to give this thing? the time and the effort that it requires to get it up to speed? No, not really. But if this were your only 3D printer, I would hope that it just is going to take a little bit of TLC to get it back to running. And from other people I know who have used them, this sort of problem is fixable and it will be fixed. But if I don't do it because I'm too busy with other printers, this may be the last I get to say on this printer which is kind of a shame. It really did surprise me once I started using it, and it still comes off as a highly recommended 3D printer. Dagama, you guys surprised me, and I was really pleased to be surprised by your printer. Fortunately, I can end this string of re-reviews with a happy ending. The Cube 2 from Longer is another, actually all of these 3D printers have been fairly cheap and fairly easy to use for children 3D printers. Now, I never gave this printer its own review video at the beginning. It was folded into another video, and I'm still not giving it its own review video, but that's fine. In that video, I pointed out that, yeah, it doesn't have a heated build plate, but it's very easy to use, and then later I discovered it's not accurate. It can't. It's got terrible backlash. Now, I could dive into the slicer settings, do some slicer aerobics, and get this thing to overcome that. So it's not a total loss. But the one thing that bugged me about it initially was that its SD card was way on the back and the, the control screen was on the front. And I was thinking about, well, could I take the control screen and move it to the front and redirect it around? Looks like it's just got a little ribbon cable. Yeah, I should be able to do that. And then a commenter on that video said, why are you going through all that trouble? Just get a little extension cable, plug it into the back, and then tape your extension cable up to the front, and there you go. You don't have to worry about the SD card. It's now in the front. And I did that, and it's great. I love using this printer now. I use it mostly for decorative prints, prints that I don't need to be super accurate. And you know, it's surprising how often we don't need accuracy in our 3D prints. So when that's the case, I pull out the Cube 2. It's, it's a printer that's made for the children's market. And for the children's market, it's adequate. Although I would argue that accuracy in a children's 3D printer is very important because those kids, they're going to try printing Legos and stuff. Or you can just print printer blocks. Don't need to be accurate with those. But there you guys go. There's... What's been happening with some great 3D printers that I've used in the past, some of them not so great, some of them hopeful, and some of them still fairly positive. So I thank you guys very much for hanging out with me on this March Madness 
re-re-review. Next time, I'm going to take a little bit of time and talk about what I've been doing with a printer that looks a lot like MakerBot is going to start selling down. I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. Next up in this kind of rapid fire re 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 re